Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Both Caleb and Jonathan sent me this story. It's an interesting one from WTOP. A man from D.C. thought he won a $340 million Powerball prize, but it turned out to be a mistake on a website. And so now he has filed an action, as you can imagine. Jenna Romaine wrote this. The man thought he won the lottery jackpot, but when he went to redeem the prize, he was informed there had been a mistake. The man has filed a lawsuit against the district, Powerball, and additional government offices and affiliated companies, saying they've refused to pay him a $340 million prize after his numbers came up on the D.C. Lottery's website last year. So they didn't come up in the winning drawing. They came up on a website. He bought the ticket on January 6th of 2023, but he did not watch the drawing, which took place on the 7th. He then pulled up the D.C. Lottery website in the morning of the 8th, and it displayed his numbers as the winning numbers. The Powerball prize at that time was $340 million. He told NBC Washington, I got a little excited, but I didn't shout and I didn't scream. I just politely called a friend. I took a picture, as he recommended, and that was it, and I went to sleep. But when he went to redeem his winning ticket at a licensed retailer, he was denied his prize. Now, I'm not sure that you can redeem a $340 million prize at a a local retailer. Um, I suspect they merely mean that he went in to check it. But then when he brought the ticket to the D.C. office of Lottery and Gaming Prize Center, he was denied again. What he didn't know was that the numbers posted on the D.C. Lottery website were not the correct numbers They were not the same as the ones from the January 7 Powerball drawing. Eventually, he was told that one of the lottery's contractors, a D.C.-based company, made a mistake and had posted the wrong numbers to the website. However, he says his numbers stayed up on the website for at least three days. He said they have said that one of their contractors made a mistake. Now, this is his attorney speaking. Even if a mistake was made, the question becomes, what do you do about that? There is a precedent for this. A similar case happened in Iowa where a mistake was admitted by a contractor and they paid the winnings out. I'm not aware of that case, but we'll talk about this case. According to court documents, while the contractor has admitted to mistakenly posting the wrong numbers, it's denied all other allegations. They have countered some of this man's claims, including alleging that he purchased the alleged winning ticket using errant numbers mistakenly posted on the website in advance of the actual Powerball drawing. And that would be an interesting thing if they could show that they had posted the numbers incorrectly too soon (laughs) and they were incorrect. Meanwhile, he's suing for breach of contract and negligence, among additional counts claiming he is entitled to the entirety of the Powerball prize or to damages for the defendant's gross negligence. Uh, And the uh, contractor has declined to comment on this as it is an active legal matter. And so here's the question. You buy a lottery ticket. What does that entitle you to? It entitles you to uh, a certain contingency, which is the payment of money or sometimes more tickets. (laughs) And... um, those contingencies arise if the numbers on your ticket match certain numbers drawn by the organization doing the drawing. And I have a sneaky feeling it does not say, we will pay if your numbers are displayed on a website someplace. It says, we will pay if these numbers are drawn. So as far as a breach of contract goes based on the lottery ticket, I don't see that. I don't see that at all. Because the contract is, we draw these numbers, you win. Did we draw your numbers? No. You don't win. That's, that's it. Now, is he entitled to something else for the negligence of somebody putting up ticket numbers that are wrong and him believing he had won and then finding out he hadn't? And I can see some people going, I've got some sympathy for that because obviously this roller coaster of emotions, you know, quite often you can sue for people who get horribly upset by something, you know, intentional infliction of emotional distress negligent infliction of emotional distress in some places, and so on. And then the question becomes, yeah, but really? So if the company makes a mistake and they eventually correct it, but he was told quite early that that was a mistake, is he entitled to $340 million for that mistake? And I'm not really seeing that either. I'm not. And so this is a strange one, but 
there have been lotteries now for quite some time. I remember when the very first lotteries came in, and I'm talking about a long time ago, my friends, but some people in my audience might remember this. So in Michigan, for instance, they had a three-digit and a four-digit. And every night they would draw a three-digit number and a four-digit number. And the tickets were a buck apiece. And uh, you didn't win a trillion dollars, but there were people who played that. And at the time, it was a controversy. Oh, my gosh, the state is sanctioning gambling. But they said, don't worry. The money that we raise from this is going to go to education. So that's going to help things, right? And, of course, it's now expanded to where we've got these mega, super-duper, double-secret lottos with 18 states. And uh, if you get the Powerball, the Gold Ball, the Red Ball, and, of course, the double-secret ball, you will win uh, $3 trillion. Um, <laughs> Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I understand them. I, I will admit I've bought tickets on a few occasions. I don't buy tickets often. But if I'm at my favorite store and the jackpot is up in the billion-dollar range, I'll buy a couple tickets. And I buy a couple tickets because it's, it's not that I think I'm going to win. It's that it's fun to think about what would happen if you did win, right? What would you do if you suddenly had, you know, you take the lump sum and it's six. $100 million. <laughs> what would you do if you won $600 million in a lump sum? And you can think about this, and there's that little extra ingredient in there to give us some authenticity. It says, hypothetically, you could win, hypothetically. So you can now think about it. It's a little more fun than sitting around right now going, gee, what would I do if I won $600 million? Well, how are you going to do that? Okay, so it, it, it moves it from the realm of, utter impossibility to the realm of slightly but almost impossible, okay? And, and so that's, that to me is the fun of the lotto. But I'm not sure if a guy can say, I bought a ticket that was a loser, but because this contractor on their website said it was a winner, I'm entitled to the winnings. The story here from WTOP lists three causes of action, and one is, again, breach of contract, the second is negligence, and it does say here gross negligence, and I'm not sure those are separate counts or they're simply how they're talking about it here. Negligence is where somebody has a duty to somebody else, and they breach that duty, and the breach causes harm to somebody else. So, for instance, the most common I can think of is auto negligence. You have a duty to drive your car in a safe and reasonable manner within the law, and if you're out there driving like a maniac and you injure somebody, you can be sued for auto negligence. OK, but you have that duty to drive safely and reasonably and within the law. So the question is, what duty does the contractor have to the public in general and to buyers of tickets who look at their website? What duty do they owe those people? And you might say, but Steve, they do owe the duty. They owe the duty to post the numbers accurately because it can cause all kinds of problems. What if you had the winning ticket and you looked at the wrong numbers and said, oh, I lost and you just took the, the ticket and threw it away and never, ch never checked it again. Yeah, you, you'd, you'd have been harmed. But here the guy's got a losing ticket. And he says, I was induced into thinking I had won. So if they owe him the duty of posting the numbers correctly, and he mistakenly thought he won until he was told he didn't, what are his damages? And I can see somebody saying, you know something, Steve? If I was told I won $340 million and a day later I was told, no, you didn't. That was a mistake, a Scrivener's error. Uh, I can see someone saying, yeah, there's some harm there. But is it $340 million of harm? I don't see it. I don't see it. But that could just be me. That could just be me. So feel free to weigh in if you think the guy deserves more than that. But quite frankly, I think this is not going to get very far legally. Because I think they're going to look at the breach of contract claim and go, the contract is quite clear. You buy a winning ticket, we pay you. You buy a losing ticket, we don't pay you. You bought a losing ticket. Boom. Now let's talk about negligence. What duty do these people owe you? Did they breach that duty? And then what is your harm? What are the damages you've suffered? And how do we quantify them? That is, I think, where the trouble is going to start. So Caleb and Jonathan Senate, thanks a lot for WTOP. General Romain wrote that. A D.C. man thought he won a $340 million Powerball prize, but it turned out to be a website mistake, basically a, a typographical error of sorts. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. 
Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Are you a spectator or a player? Players influence the game while spectators watch them do it. Such is life.